Today I'm going to introduce you to Midjourney, one of the best AI-based image generation tools available. So let's jump into it. I'm logged into the Midjourney homepage here at midjourney.com. Let's start by creating an image, upscaling it, and then downloading it. For this, I'll click the Create button over here. And now up here we have this text field. Here we can type in something we'd like to see. And I recommend pretending like you're trying to describe what you want to another person. So here I'll just type something simple, an astronaut walking in the desert, a castle is in the background. Then I'll hit enter. Now you can see the job starting to process here. And I've gotten four results. So this is pretty common in Midjourney. Whenever you run an operation, you'll usually get four results back to choose from. If I click on an image, I'll get further options. So let's click on this one here. Now if I right click on this image, I can say copy image. And then you can paste it into some other program that you like. Here I am in Affinity Photo. I'll paste from my clipboard. And you can see my image here. Now the resolution is pretty low, only 1232 by 928. We can upscale it within Midjourney. So here on the Midjourney page again, I have this upscale option down here. And there's Subtle and Creative. Subtle will preserve how our image looks, whereas Creative might add some more details. Let's just go with Subtle for now. So I'll click this. Now you didn't see any change, but over here on the Create tab, you can see it says zero of one. In general, this Create tab here will show you how many jobs are currently running. So let's click on it. And now you can see my upscale job is starting. Now while this is running, I'll point out that on the right, you can see the details for this job. So it's an upscale job. It shows me the prompt and it shows the aspect ratio. Now that it's finished, I can click on it. I can right click on it and copy the image again. And if I go back to Affinity Photo, now you can see the resolution is higher, 2464 by 1856. If you need to go to a higher resolution, you can try using an external tool like Topaz AI. Now this is the part of the tutorial where I'm supposed to give you a big explanation of how to write prompts. This can be useful long-term, but I recommend a much better way to get started quickly with Midjourney. And that is to use the Explore page. So I'll click Explore over here. And this shows the publicly generated images by other users. By default, you see the popular ones. If you're in an artistic rut, this is a great way to break out of it and see other ideas. So we can scroll down here. There's tons of different styles available. Some are more realistic, some are more cartoon based. But the main power is in the search bar here. So if you know a couple words related to what you want, you can type them in the search bar and see what comes up. This can be objects themselves or styles of art. So let's type impressionist here. Now you can see examples of impressionist art. But the really cool thing is that if you click on an image, you can see the details that generated it. So let's click on this image here. Over on the right, I can see the prompt that the person used to create this. Here's some other examples. Let's say I like this image here, but I want the subject matter to be different. Maybe I want it to be the Eiffel Tower. Well, let's click on this image. I can click on the prompt text and it'll automatically put it in my text bar up top. So let's do that. And I'm going to scan it. I'm just going to look at what the subject matter is. I can see golden leaves. I'm going to replace that with Eiffel Tower. Probably country isn't going to be appropriate there either. It's more of a city scene. And now I'll hit enter. Let's go back here to see my creation get generated. And now you can see my new results here. So the Explore page is a great way to get up and running quickly with a variety of styles. Now let's talk about the settings, which give you a variety of ways to control the output of your image. You can access them by clicking this control here. So I'll click it. And I can see I have more options for how my image will be created. Probably the most useful is the size option. So by default, it's a square. But you can use portrait or landscape presets. You can also drag the slider to change it that way. The aspect ratio can have a strong influence on what your image actually looks like. Let's do an extreme portrait and extreme landscape and see the difference. I'll put this prompt here for a pixel cityscape. Let's make it really tall, one to two. I'll click enter. Let's do it again. I'll press up arrow. This time let's do an extreme landscape. So I'll hit enter. So down here you can see the tall results. It tends to put us much more closer to the street. And up here you can see the wider results. In general, it seems to put us further away from the scene. So the aspect ratio can have a strong influence on the composition of your image. Here's some more examples of the same prompt, but with different sizes. Back to our settings, down here we have the model settings. And at the top there is standard versus raw. Basically, raw can help reduce some of the default mid-journey style. Here are some examples. 
It doesn't always have a clear effect, but it's something to try if you find your images looking just a little too perfect. Maybe you want to get a more unprocessed feel to them. One of the really cool options is version. If you click the drop down, you can use past versions of Mid Journey. Some people have some old styles that they like more than the current ones. But what's really cool is if you go down further, there's this model called Niji. Niji is the Japanese anime model. As you can see here, the Niji results are much more like a Japanese animation. So this is definitely something to try if you're into that style. Under aesthetics, we have three settings. Stylization can be thought of as how pretty is your image going to look? Higher values tend to look more aesthetic, whereas lower values evoke more realism. This is probably the most commonly modified parameter on this list. Weirdness can be good for introducing some unexpected results into your work. Whether or not the results truly look weird is a matter of opinion, but it can be fun to play with. And variety is another way to force more differences between the four image results you get from Midjourney. With the default setting, you can see they look very similar, whereas with a high variety, they're very different. I do want to emphasize that you should approach these parameters with a mindset of experimentation. They don't always behave the way you expect, but it's worth trying them out. Under more options, you have the ability to change the speed with which your images are generated. Keep in mind that the faster speed you choose, the more GPU processing will be needed, which can burn down your monthly hours faster. Generally, I run in fast mode and I don't have too many problems. When I'm giving a demonstration, I'll sometimes switch to turbo mode so that it goes faster for the audience. But usually fast is enough for my needs. And if you're gonna be processing a bunch of things and walking away, you can also just do relax mode. Stealth determines if your image is publicly available on the Midjourney Explore page. This is an extra feature that you have to pay for to enable. I usually have it on, but you can turn it off if you want your images to be available in the Midjourney Explore page. And finally, if you change a bunch of settings and you want things to go back to normal, for example, maybe you make all these adjustments here, remember you can always click the reset button. So I can reset my image size and I can reset my aesthetics and things are back to the default state. You can also enter those settings I showed you as parameters in the text field. So for example, I could enter cat with an aspect ratio of 163 to 27 and the stylized parameter of 500. And here you can see I can get a very specific result. I don't do this too often anymore, but it is there. Now there are two other parameters that are pretty important, but they aren't in the settings tab. The first is tile, and this will allow you to make a seamless pattern. So here I'll type watercolor orange pattern and I'll say dash dash tile. I'll hit enter. Now if I download these images and use it in a repeatable pattern, it will be seamless. Just make sure to manually test your pattern before using it on a product. Here's some examples of seamless patterns. The next parameter that's useful to know is repeat. This allows you to run the same prompt multiple times in a row. This can be used by saying dash dash repeat and then the number of times you want to run the prompt. So let's run this here. And you can see it kicked off three jobs here. This is a nice way to save time if you wanna generate more options at once. So here I've generated 12 images, three times four with just one command. Just keep in mind that it can be easy to burn through your hours much faster by using this repeat command. So don't go too crazy with it. Usually I limit it to three repetitions. Midjourney can also generate text in an image, but the results can be hit or miss. To add text to your image, simply put the text you want in quotes within your prompt. So I have this example here. You can see I put the text just married in quotes here. Let's hit enter. And you can see the results. Some are pretty good. This one's quite impressive. Some don't quite work. You can see here it doubled the text. Sometimes misspellings happen or letters might be slightly deformed. So be sure to keep an eye on what it gives you. Sometimes the best approach is to just use Midjourney to give you an idea of where to put text, and then you can actually further edit it in another program like Affinity Designer or Canva. Now a really cool feature in Midjourney is the ability to edit and extend the images it gives you. You can do this to fix a mistake or just add some more background to an image. Let's start with this prompt here, Webtoon Fantasy Castle. Now I like this last result here, but what if I wanna add some more content to the sides of it? Well, I can click on the image, and now I have these controls down here, zoom and pan. Let's try zooming out first. I'll click zoom and I'll say 2x. Once again, on our create tab, we can see the job got started. I'll click this. And over here on the right, you can see the details for our job. It's a zoom job. And it's filling in that extra area. So you can see we've got these other results. Let's further edit this one here. Let's say I want to create more content to the right of my image. Well, now I can pan. So I'll click pan right, that's this right arrow here. And let's go back to our create tab. 
Now you can see the aspect ratio has changed because we're adding more content to the right side. So once again, we have four more results we can choose from. Now let's say I want to change part of my image. Let's change this one here. I'll click on it. Now maybe I like the whole scene, but I want to replace it with a different castle. To do this, we can use the Editor tab. So I'll click Editor down here. And now I have this new interface. And what this gives me is the ability to paint out part of my image. So I'm on the Erase mode here. I'll paint out my castle. Let's just get rid of it. I like to paint a little bit beyond the bounds of the castle to give Midjourney more room to work with. So let's paint this out here. If you want to paint something back in, you can go to Restore, and I'll paint it back in. But I'll go to Erase and take it out. You can change the brush size up here. Let's take out this ocean too. Let's see what it does. And when you've made some changes, you can click Submit. So I'll click Submit. And let's go back to our Create tab to see what's happening. You can see we got four dramatically different results. And from here, you can upscale the one you like and use it. You can continue to edit the images, or you can upscale the one you like and use it in your work. Recently, Midjourney has added a separate edit page with additional features. You can access it through the Edit button here. Now, this might not be available for everyone yet. I think they're slowly rolling it out. So don't panic if you don't see it, but eventually it should be released to everyone. So let's click on this. Now, the really cool thing is you can edit existing images. For example, photographs you've taken or other artwork you've created. So here I'll click Edit Uploaded Image. And let's take this image here. So I found this image online at Unsplash. And maybe I want to add more of a sky to it. So I can drag this up here. Maybe I'll add a little more landscape to the left. I'll drag down a bit. And perhaps I don't like this mountain in the middle there. Now I'll click Submit Edit. But you can see I get an error. We have to put some content in here for the prompt. You can type something here to describe your image, or you can take a shortcut by clicking Suggest Prompt. So I'll click this, and you can see it generates this prompt for my image. So now I'll click Submit Edit, and it's going to start processing. And now we have four new options to choose from. So this was the original, and these are the changes. And I can go even further. Maybe I want this to be in the mobile aspect ratio. I'll click Submit Edit again. Now, sometimes if you go too far, you might get blank spaces on the edge. You can see here, it thinks the top and bottom is a phone. But if you want, you can just erase that. And try it again. Sometimes you have to try things a couple times for it to work. And here we have a better result. Another powerful feature is retexturing. This lets you apply a different style to an existing image. So I'm here on the Explore tab. Let's find some styles we may want to use. I'll search for Superhero Comic. And I like this one here. I'll click and drag it to my text bar up here. So I'll let go. And now you can see it's added. When you hover over it, you have these three options here for how you want to use it. You can use it as a character reference, a style reference, or an image prompt. Let's go back to our Edit tab. If you're still seeing one of your old works, click Edit tab again, and you'll see this page here. So I'll click Edit New Image. Let's upload an image. This time I'll upload a person. Now you want to go to the Retexture tab here. So Retexture. And you can change the way the image will be used. You can use it as an image prompt or as a style prompt. So let's do Style Ref. I'll just type Man Walking Down the Street. And I'll click Submit Retexture. And here we have our new results. If you want to make a change to something, you can go back to the Edit tab. Maybe we want to change his face here. I'll click Submit Edit again. And we have four more results to choose from. As always, you'll probably want to do this a couple times to find something you like. Another relatively new feature in Midjourney is the ability to personalize your styles. You can do this by voting on images you like. And that's achieved through the Personalize tab here. So I'm on this Personalize page. And if I scroll down, you can create different profiles that have different aesthetic settings. So I'll go to my global profile here. And it'll be prompted with a series of image pairs, and you can vote on the one you like. So I'll look at these two images. Maybe I like the one on the right, the left. And you can just keep doing this, and it will train the system to see what style you like. Now I'll go back to the Personalize page. I'll turn Personalization on. And let's go back to the Create tab. If I put in a prompt and hit Enter, you can see it's using my style profile here. 
And the results can be kind of hard to predict, but theoretically it's gonna show you something more in the style of what you like. You can also use the styles that you see from other users in the Explore tab. So if I click on this image here, I can see this person used a style tag here. You could use that for your own image. Say man using computer, enter. And now I'm generating this image using this other user's profile. So it can be a cool way to get different styles for things. And if you wanna turn it off, you can go back to the personalized page and disable it. Finally, if you'd like to bulk download your images, you can go to the Organize tab here. To select all images for a particular day, you can hover over the date and click Select All. And then down here, you have the ability to download. If I scroll down, I can also select other days. So I can select yesterday. On the right, you can also scroll through your whole timeline. Of course, I have lots of stuff there, so it'd take forever, but it's possible. Hold Shift to unselect things. You can also click and drag to select what you want. And then when you have a selection you like, you can choose download. And then you'll be prompted to download them. And also be careful of selecting too many images. It can definitely take a while for them to finish processing. I wouldn't really recommend selecting more than 100 images at a time. And when it's finished processing, you can see that here it prompts me to download the images. So it's a pretty cool way of bulk downloading and organizing your work. Are there any questions you have about Midjourney? Let me know down in the comments below. I plan to make more Midjourney videos, so be sure to subscribe to be notified when they come out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.